In this video, we're going to talk all about the final keyword in Java. We'll go into detail about each of the three ways you can use final. If you're new here, my name's John, and I do a new Java tutorial video every single week. So if you like this video, be sure to leave a like and consider subscribing so you don't miss the new video every week. I also have a full Java course available in a link down in the description if you're interested. Let's get to it. OK, so we're going to talk about the three ways you can use the final keyword in Java. Final classes, final methods, and final variables. Let's start with final classes. What is a final class? Let's talk about it using an example. So here I've got an animal class, and I also have this other class called dog that extends animal. It's a subclass, a child class of the animal class. This is an example of inheritance, one of the basic concepts of object-oriented programming. Since this dog extends the animal class, it's a subclass of animal, it gets all of the properties and functionality of that animal class, and then it can just build more things on top of it. But here's where final comes in for classes. So where you'll see final for a final class is uh, right here at the top in the class declaration itself. So right now I've got public class animal. If you have a final class, you'll see public final class animal. So what happens when you make a class final? What it does is prevents other class from being a subclass of this one. Nothing can extend from it or be a child class of it. So now you can see if we hop over to our dog class that extends animal, now you can see that Eclipse is giving us this error and it says the type dog cannot subclass the final class animal. So for classes, you want to use this final keyword whenever you want your class to not be extended for whatever reason. In practice, when I've used uh, final classes in my job, it's usually because it just doesn't make any sense for the class to be extended. For example, if I have a class that just has a whole bunch of values and constants that are used by other classes, but usually if you are making something like an animal class, it's pretty obvious that you want it to be able to be subclass and extended and have all different other types of animals that do different things. So the majority of time for your basic classes, unless you have a good reason to make it final, it's probably best to just keep the final keyword off so that you or another programmer can go in and extend this class and have whatever other kind of functionality you need in a subclass. Number two, the second use of final is to make final methods. That might seem kind of weird. When do you need to make a method final? So here we have our animal class that uh, has a couple of fields, name and color, and getters and setters for those fields, but it also has this method public void eat. And all it does is just print out munch, munch, munch. Now remember my dog class extends that animal class. And if you notice, we don't implement an eat method here in this class. However, if I create a dog object, I can still call the eat method on that dog, even though the eat method doesn't actually exist directly in my dog class. I can call it because it exists in the animal class that the dog extends. The dog class gets that eat functionality for free because it extends animal. And we can show that here in our main method. We can create a dog, my dog equals new dog, and we can call my dog dot eat. You can see that that method is available for us to call. And if we save and run our code, we see that it prints out munch, munch, munch. But back over here in the dog class, even though I don't have to implement my own version of the eat method, if I don't want to, I can get that functionality from the parent animal class. I can, if I want to, override that parent class eat method and implement my own eat method with my own implementation specifically for the dog. So here I can write public void eat and instead have it print out a nom nom nom. So now if I save that and go back to my main method and run my program again, when my dog eats now, instead of going munch, 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 it says nom, nom, nom. But here is where the final keyword for a method comes in. If I go back to my animal class and change this eat method to public final void eat, that makes it so all subclasses of the animal class, like dog, can no longer override this eat method with their own implementation. So if I save this change and then hop back over to my dog class, I can see that now I get an error that says it cannot override the final method from animal. So you might use this when you have some sort of method in your parent class and you want the functionality of that method to be exactly the same for all children of that class. You don't want it to be able to be overridden with their own implementation. So sometimes that can make sense if you have some certain method in your parent class that just has to do some certain thing in a very, very specific way. And you don't want all the child classes to go and mess things up with their own implementation. You can use the final keyword in that method in your parent class to prevent the child classes from overriding it. So we've talked about final classes, final methods. Now let's talk about the third use of final, final variables. What is a final variable? All a final variable is, is a variable that you can only assign one time. That's it. Let's use our my dog object here as an example. So instead of just saying dog my dog, you can say 
final dog my dog. So what does that mean? It means it can only be assigned one time. So here we're already initializing this my dog object with new dog. So if you didn't have this final keyword, you could down here if you wanted to, uh, you can go ahead and say my dog equals new dog again. And it would create this brand new dog object and assign it to my dog. But if we make this my dog final, then you can see we get an error down here. The final local variable my dog cannot be assigned because we're already assigning it once up here. We can't assign it a second time down here. So a final variable, after it is assigned one time, it can never be assigned again after that. So in the example we have here, we are initializing this variable on the same line we're declaring it, but you don't necessarily have to do that even for a final variable. You can get rid of that initialization here and instead move it down here. My dog equals new dog. And this is totally fine that you're instantiating this my dog on a separate line, but now that it has been assigned one time, it can never be assigned again after that. So why might you use something like this? There are many uses for final variables. Probably the main one that I see and use every single day in my job as a lead Java engineer is to create constants. Let's say, for example, I need the value of pi for my program. I need to know what pi is so I can do a whole bunch of math with it. So what I might do is just create a double variable, double pi. Double pi sounds pretty good. And say that equals 3.14159. And this is, you know, all fine. I could take this pi variable and I could do whatever kind of math I need to do with pi and it would all work. But of course, the problem is that you in the future or some other programmer can come in here and just set pi to something else. Pi equals nine. And that could just destroy the functionality of your entire program. In order to avoid that, we can do what we just learned. We can make this a final double pi. And now we see we get an error here. We can't assign it twice. So that solves that problem. Now this value of pi we know is guaranteed to never change. But what if I want to use this value of pi, not just here in my code, but I want to use it in all kinds of places. I don't just want to use it in one class. Now, the main way that is done is to create a constant. The normal format for a constant is it goes uh, kind of right here in your file below the class declaration, and it has to be outside of any method. So it's usually right about here. You'll say public, static, final, and then whatever your normal variable declaration is. Double pi equals 3.14159. So now I no longer have to go and declare or instantiate this pi variable down here. I can just use this pi constant down here uh, to do whatever I need. So if I wanted, I could do system.out print line pi times three. I can run that and get 9.4247, blah, blah, blah. I can even use it outside of this class itself. For example, I can hop over to my dog class, and um, if I want to use in the eat method, I want to use the value for pi, I can go and access this public uh, constant to use in my other classes. So if I wanted to include uh, printing out pi here in this eat method, I could just say plus final example dot pi. So even though this pi constant is in a complete other class, I can access and use it here safely, knowing that it can never be modified and messed up. And when we run our program, we can now see that we're printing out the value of pi along with that eat method. Another thing to note here, though, is that for constants, whenever you have a public static final whatever variable here in your class, the convention for naming them is a little bit different. Instead of having normal like camel case like we did here for my dog, where you know you start with a lowercase and then for the first letter of every word after that, it's uppercase. That's called camel case. That's what you normally use for Java variables. For constants, the convention is different. We actually use all caps. And here we only have one word because it's just pi. But if you happen to have multiple words, you separate them with underscores uh, like this, pi more words. So that's important to know. That's the convention in Java for constant names. As a side note, you may already know that a constant for pi is already available in a built-in Java class. And you can access it by just calling math dot pi. And as you can see, it is named in uppercase because that is the Java convention for constants. And also, if you happen to want to have a constant like pi here in your code, but you don't want it to be able to be accessed in other classes, you only want it accessible in the class you declared it, all you have to do is instead uh, make this private instead of public. So now that this is private, we can go over to our dog class and see where we're trying to use this uh, pi constant. It says uh, it's not visible because it's private. It's only visible to that class and not visible to this dog class. Let's go ahead and change this back to public. So for variables, you'll probably see the final keyword used most often to create constants like this at the top of uh, class files. But it is also good to remember that you can just use it in the middle of other code too. If you enjoyed this video or learned something, uh, please let me know by leaving a like and you might be interested in some of the other Java videos I put up. And consider subscribing too so you don't miss each week's video. And it also really helps get these videos out to help more people, so I really do appreciate it.
Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.